TR Rehab back with another video. Today I'm doing a wheel bearing replacement on an Infinity FX35. It's a real simple job, so let's get into the video. The first thing I'm going to do is loosen all the lug nuts before lifting the vehicle using the factory jack. Since the key lock has been tightened the least, I'm going to go ahead and get that on out the way. I wanted to do this video without my impact wrench or my hydraulic jack because the average do-it-yourselfer may not have these items on hand. To locate your jack point, start at the corner of the door and go straight down. You'll see two dimples on a metal channel about two inches wide. I'm going to slide the jack up under this channel until they're perfectly in line. While cranking the jack, we're going to slowly raise the vehicle. Once the vehicle is off the ground, we can completely remove the remaining lug nuts. If you've ever replaced the brakes on your Infiniti, this job is essentially the same thing, adding a few extra steps and replacing the wheel bearings. Not thinking ahead, I didn't get new brake pads, but I guess that's a job I have to save for another day. Removing the wheel, I'm gonna slide it under the driver's side door. Along with my jack stand, it's an added safety precaution. Removing the brake calipers, there are two 17 millimeter bolts, one located on the bottom and the other on the top. I'm going to take a flathead screwdriver and wedge it in between the rotors so I can collapse the pistons, making it easier to remove the calipers. Now it's time to remove the caliper bolts. Once the bolts are removed, I'm going to hang the calipers using some spare weed eater cord. Using a 7 8 socket, I'm going to remove the remaining two bolts holding the caliper mounting bracket. My 20 inch inky wheel profile is set up with one inch spacers. Some may want to skip this part of the video, but I have a real neat trick on how to remove the spacers that might be useful to you somewhere down the road. Removing the jack stand and the tire from under the vehicle. I'm going to need to lower the factory jack where the rotors are about 12 inches off the ground. 
Once lowered, I'm going to reinstall all the lug nuts. They only need to be finger tight because I'm going to use them as leverage with my breaker bar and a large screwdriver. I'm gonna remove the lug nuts as well as the nuts to the spacer so that I can access the 32 millimeter axle nut. Before going any further, I'm going to unhook the wheel speed sensor using a 10 millimeter socket. Once released, I'm going to clean the sensor with a microfiber towel. With the spacer and the rotor now out of the way, I can also access the cotter pin for removal. Popping the center cap from the wheel, I'm gonna reinstall it along with two lug nuts that'll be snug tight. Once the tire is lowered to the ground, that'll give me the leverage I need to remove the axle nut. Using a breaker bar and a 32 millimeter socket, I'm gonna to attempt to break the axle nut without having to use my impact gun. Now that the axle nut is loose, we're gonna raise the tire off the ground once again. Removing the tire and the lug nuts, we're gonna reinstall the jack stand and slide the tire back under the vehicle for added security. There are four 17 millimeter bolts holding the wheel bearings in place. Two on each side. Removing these four bolts along with the axle nut, the wheel bearing is now able to be removed, followed by the dust shield, which has the flange going to the inside.
adding high temp never sees can only help. I'm gonna clean the dust shield off and the installation is simply the reverse of removal. Once again, we're gonna to have to lower the wheel to tighten the axle nut, the opposite of what we did in removing it. Once tightened, remove the tire and reinstall the cotter pin. Once the cotter pin is installed, we're gonna add more high temp never sees to the rotor as well as to the spacer and this job is almost complete. I'm gonna apply a little degreaser to the rotor.
removing the tire and jack stands from under the vehicle, it's time to lower it one more time and use that leverage technique with the screwdriver and the breaker bar. Remove the lug nuts for the third time. Install the wheel sensor in the brakes and we are done. Here, I'm just making sure the brake pads are installed correctly. 
If they are installed correctly, they should spring back when you release them after pressing them against the rotor. If this video was helpful to you, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to our rehab.